Hey everybody, let's now talk about another lesson for this unit. This time we will talk about the life and works of Jose Garcia Villa. In this lesson, we focus on the life and works of this particular National Artist Awardee for Literature in the field of poetry as we go deeper and delve into the rich history of the life of J JGV or Jose Garcia Villa as well as his works. What are the key concepts that made him qualified to become a member or to become recognized as a member of the National Artist for literature so with this lesson i hope that you're going to jot down important notes and salient points of our discussions so that you will be able to remember and to study well the life of one jose garcia villa so let's begin our discussion by stating first our objectives for this lesson we have two first it is to recognize the canonical works of jose garcia villa and evaluate Jose Garcia Villa's works through his writing. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about how much Jose Garcia Villa has contributed to the literature, to the field of literature that has made him recognizable as a national artist for literature. But before we continue, I would like to ask everybody this very essential question at the start of our discussion. How does Jose Garcia Villa's life serve as an inspiration to aspiring artists of this generation? We all know that uh, nowadays, because of the so many or the vast creative outlet that people have and are made available for all of us, we have different styles, we have different uh, inspirations in terms of showcasing our artistic side. So my question is, how does the life of Jose Garcia Villa serve as an inspiration to aspiring artists of this generation? How does he make it into a point where it is very important, right? That there is a necessary inspiration out of his life, his works, the different experiences that he's had over the course of his illustrious career as a National Artist for Literature Awardee. Now, as we answer this question and as we go along with our discussion, here are some of the vocabulary words that we are going to encounter as we go along with our discussion. So take note of them so that you will understand better the examples that we are going to be discussing with the use of these vocabulary words later on. So first, we have flowering. Flowering is a noun which means the season or period when a plant's flowers bloom. Example, I am excited to see what my rose bushes will look like during their flowering. Second is bow. Bow is a noun which means a curved piece of wood with a string connecting its ends, such as in violins. Example, when violinists take care of their instrument, they don't neglect to maintain the bow as well. Third is slender. Slender is an adjective which means gracefully thin. Example, while watching their performance, Lucia was enamored by the slender ballerinas. Fourth is luminance. Luminance is a noun which means the intensity of light emitted by an object or being luminous. Example of this, the pirate's greed was magnified by the gemstone's luminance. And lastly is hover. Hover is a verb which means to remain near something or someone. Example, Hilda is often distracted by Zelda's tendency to hover around her while she works. So these are only the few of the many vocabulary words that we are going to encounter during the course of our discussion. So make sure that you have jot them down and you can remember them so that we may be able to understand better the examples that we are going to examine as we go along with our discussion. All right, this time, let's now talk about Jose Garcia Villa. First, let's discuss the early life of Jose Garcia Villa, and then later on, we are going to proceed 
to his works. So in between his life and his works, the discussion will center on the inspirations and the influences that he has had that led him to become a or to become interested with literature, hence being given the distinction of National Artist for Literature. So let's now talk about Jose Garcia Villa. So Jose Garcia Villa was born on August 5, 1908 in Malate, Manila. He is one of the six children of Dr. Simeon and Dr. Simeon Villa and Guia Garcia. At the age of 15, Villa was able to publish his first story in the Manila Times, the oldest existing newspaper in the country. During his college years, he became a charter member of the Writers' Club of the University. In his second year of law school, he wrote Man Songs, a series of erotic poems under his nom de plume, O Sevilla. This work appeared in the Philippines Herald and caused him to be suspended from the UP Writers' Club. Eventually, he was expelled. In 1929, he migrated to the United States. He enrolled at the University of New Mexico where he finished his Bachelor of Arts degree and then enrolled to for postgraduate studies at the Columbia University. Jose Garcia Villa spent the rest of his life in New York, where he produced poetry and worked as an associate editor, editor, and lecturer. He held private poetry workshops at his Greenwich Village apartment, where he was named Pope of Greenwich Village. He received many nominations and awards for his poetry. In 1973, he received an honorary doctorate in literature from the University of the Philippines. In 1973 as well, he was named as National Artist for Literature. So as you can see, Jose Garcia Villa's life is not that of the norm or, or not that of the norm or of the ideal. He spent his life in the US where he was after being expelled from the University of the Philippines Writers Club. But look at the twist of faith. In 1973, UP gave him an honorary or bestowed to him an honorary doctorate in literature after his many works in Greenwich Village in his home in New York, where he served as associate editor, editor, and lecturer, hence garnering the nickname the Pope of Greenwich Village. Now, Villa is known and remembered as the man who transformed Philippine poetry. He challenged the literary conventions and crafted styles and subjects that became the subjects of study and imitation. First, let's talk about one of the many works of Jose Garcia Villa's writing style. We have the reversed consonance rhyme scheme. In this rhyme scheme, the last sounded consonants of the last syllable are reversed to form the corresponding rhyme. Examples. Lips, spill, write, tear. So if you can see in the examples given, a rhyme scheme sa iyahang last sounding consonant of the last syllable are reversed to form the corresponding line. So diri, ang last ni mong makita sa lips is PS or Ips. So yung gihimo, iyan na siyang gi, iyan na siyang gi, change pag about the second syllable or the second yeah the second syllable of the last line so lips and spell rhyme together we also have write and tear right so he is trying to ch challenge the status quo by having this particular rhyme scheme wherein gibalik tad niya kung unsa ang last sounding consonant sa last syllable iyang gibali sa ikaduha to have the different rhyme scheme of literature. So an, another work that really put Jose Garcia Villa's writing style on the map was comma poems. These are poems in which a comma is placed after every word. Example, Villa said, the commas are an integral and essential part of the medium, regulating the poem's verbal density and time movement. 
enabling each word to attain a fuller tonal value and the line movement to become more measured. So, mo siya ang kama poems ni Jose Garcia Villa. So, there are two identified writing styles of Jose Garcia Villa. First, we have the reverse consonance rhyme scheme where he's talking about the rhyme scheme of the words in his literature. And another is kama poems wherein adunay kama after every word. The reason for this is to provide right an essential part of the medium that regulates the poem's verbal density and time movement this enables each word to attain a fuller tonal value and the line movement to become more measured so mona siya ang iyang technicality that he contributed as he tried or as he did revolutionize the philippine uh, poetry now, let's take a look at one of the examples of the many writings, the many pieces of Jose Garcia Villa. This one is entitled Lyric 17. So we are going to take a look and look, uh, we are going to examine this particular work of Jose Garcia Villa. Alright, so this is the example of Jose Garcia Villa. Right, so the Aito, he passed away in 1997. So if you can look at the picture, that is Jose Garcia Villa. So let's now take or let's now examine the example of Jose Garcia Villa's lyrics 17. All right, allow me to read to you the poem. First, a poem must be magical, then musical as a seagull. It must be a brightness moving and hold secret a bird's flowering. It must be slender as a bell, and it must hold fire as well. It must have the wisdom of bows, and it must kneel like a rose. It must be able to hear the luminance of dove and deer. It must be able to hide what it seeks like a bride. And over all, I would like to hover God smiling from poem's cover. So that was lyrics 17 by Jose Garcia Villa, where he is talking about what a poem must be or what a poem must contain in order for it to become uh, relevant and important, such as the different metaphors that he used in this particular literary piece. So after knowing Jose Garcia Villa, his life and his writing styles and, and being able to read one of the poems, an excerpt of one of his poems, another question comes to mind. How does learning about Jose Garcia Villa's poems deepen our appreciation of poetry? If you can see, he lived a very um, outlandish and outlaw life, kumbaga, wherein he served his purpose and that is to question the status quo of poetry and to contribute right to how poetry becomes more emphasized in philippine culture now after knowing about jose garcia villa's poems how do we deepen our appreciation to poetry in general whether you are an author or whether you are a particular uh, amid reader of different literary pieces how do we appreciate it more after knowing the life or learning about Jose Garcia Villa's poems. All right, if there are questions that, uh, raised, that were raised into your mind, make sure that you're going to jot them down as we have our online feedbacking in the next sessions. Thank you and God bless.